Hey everyone, Chris the Thrift Shop Hustler with another What Sold on eBay this week. We are doing this live, so I hope everyone is having a great week. We haven't done a show in over a week, or I should say I haven't even uploaded anything in about a week. Things have been super crazy busy here on my neck of the woods and trying to build the ACS uh, business and helping them get to that milestone once again i'm chris the thrift shop hustler uh, definitely go down there and click the subscribe button we're at 7071 live subscribers right now as you can see over there to the left and i want to appreciate everyone uh, we reached 7000 uh, the other day and i meant to do like a special show on the 7000 and i couldn't even get <laughs> couldn't even get to that so uh, once again i really appreciate everyone's support we're going to go over basically what sold over the last few days there was actually a lot of things that sold but i picked out a couple of uh kind of nuggets to kind of go over and for those that have watched the show before you know that uh you're gonna see certain things that um might not make a bunch of money but i definitely have information that will uh hopefully you'll find entertaining and informative and all that fun stuff and anytime during this video definitely click the like button that helps the algorithm along and we're just going to get right into this once again uh, definitely appreciate everyone's support with the channel and everything like that so first up we have some magic the gathering cards and for those that know, don't, don't know uh, this is what magic the gathering cards look like they're basically cards that have been out since the mid 90s they're a playing card game there's literally thousands of them out now i remember when i first started i had no idea uh, when I first started into collectibles, I should say, when these first came out, uh, I had no idea that these things were going to be uh, worth anything. And uh, I wish I saved. Uh, uh, actually, I'll tell you a funny story. I actually uh, put a bunch of I took we used to play this game a long time ago in the 90s. And I took like 5000 cards to my friend's house because that's where we always ended up. And uh, I just left them there over the years. So I hit him up like a couple years ago <laughs> and asked him if he still had uh, those cards. And of course he didn't. And I forgive him. I left those cards there. It was like 15 years later. And uh, some of those cards are worth lots and lots of money. So I kicked myself for not getting those back sooner. But, you know, what can we say here? Uh, we want to give a huge shout out to the people in the chat. We got TJ Horth. I'm doing very good. We got Mary, Justin, and NH guy in the house. I appreciate you guys tuning in. We're talking about what sold on eBay through the charity shop this week. And uh, once again, I am the eBay hub manager for the American Cancer Society's eBay shop. I just got that job like five months ago, and it is an amazing job. It's actually kind of crazy to think how everything has came full circle from me uh, being a teenager doing eBay in 1995, 1996 to uh, running, you know, a major corporations, a major charity uh, is running their eBay business. So it's just, it's crazy how everything has come full circle. So I appreciate everyone that is jumping into the chat. Definitely click the like button. Anyways, let's get back to this Magic the Gathering stuff. Uh, if you ever see this kind of stuff, definitely buy it if it's cheap enough. Uh, they, they, a lot of the newer stuff isn't worth that much. And uh, we can go over that real quick. As you can see, um, this little silver icon means an uncommon and the gold icon means rare. And then there's like a purplish kind of, I don't even know what to call it, like a burnt orange icon. That's like, a, I don't know, they're not called super rares or epics or anything. They're called something else, but that, those are the kind of cards you want to look out for. Uh, of course, there's foils and uh, let me see here. I don't think I have any photos of the foil cards. Uh, there's a foil card right there, but you really can't see the foil thing. Uh, but anyways, keep an eye out for this. I, I've found this stuff a bunch of times at um, Goodwills. Uh, I, I find a bunch of magic cards at Goodwills. They're usually put in the case. So every Goodwill usually has like a, a couple of jewelry cases. And for some reason, I've always found these in there. Now, another thing too, another pro tip for finding Magic the Gathering cards at Goodwill is sometimes they'll put them in like boxes. And so you'll have to like know what you're looking for because it obviously doesn't show like what what's in the boxes so if you're, anytime you see baseball card uh stuff definitely go and ask you know exactly what's in there and another kind of pro tip if you're ever out there you know in the field 
at garage sales or thrift shops or anywhere, ask if you're at a garage sale if they have any cards. Um, I always do this at every garage sale I ever went to. Um, if I can find the people that are running it and stuff, and it looks like if they're not overwhelmed, I'll ask them if they have any video games or baseball cards. And it just, it doesn't hurt to ask because I can't tell you the dozens of times that I've asked for something and they go, oh my God, I can't believe you are asking for that. I thought no one wanted it. They go in the house, they pull out all their Game Boy games, they pull out all their Nintendo games. I mean, like, you know, these are so old, we didn't realize anyone wanted these. And, you know, of course, uh, for the most part, you know, they, they're willing to give you a good deal on that stuff. I can't tell you how many times uh, that has happened. So uh, for everyone watching the show uh, this weekend, go and definitely, if you go to the garage sales and you're looking for something specific and you don't see it, just ask. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I know some people are shy and everything, but you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I don't, I'm not shy uh, at all with talking to people that are running the garage sales or even asking for a discount. If I think something is uh, a little bit too, it, it's something that I want that I think is a little price too high. Now I'm not going to, here's the thing too, is like there, you know, there's some of us that might, you know, see something that's for a dollar that's worth $20 and see if you can go 50 cents. I'm not that kind of guy. If something's worth $20 and they're selling it for a dollar, I'm going to pay the dollar. So, you know, there's a balancing act there. So anyways, Magic the Gathering, uh, we had this on a auction and I took actually a best offer for $100 on this. And there was lots of, um, uh, lots of actually offers, really low ball offers when we first listed this thing. So there we go, and uh, let's see here, what we got here. Uh, next up we have the Chanel designer car, a cashmere cardigan sweater. Uh, this is actually amazing. Uh, you know what, I think I actually listed this on the last show. And my apologies if I, if I listed this on the last show. This is actually amazing uh, cardigan sweater. It's like a piece of art. And uh, you know, it's just one of those things that um, is just amazing. We took a best offer for 300 and something on this. Uh, let me see if I, I did take a photo of the label. That's what the inside label looked like. As we can see here, uh, size 44. And I think that's like a UK size. But this is like a beautiful, beautiful sweater. Um, <laughs> TJ Horth, no, we sold that. We took a best offer for $100 on that Magic the Gathering uh, thing. Because what happens is if you take a best offer on an auction thing, um it doesn't show in the completed auction. So that's what I did. He, that's how I show these things is for stuff that is completed. We got flipper Joe in the house, but anyways, this is a nice, uh, this is a nice cardigan uh, sweater. I mean, like I said, Chanel, you're probably not going to find this stuff at the thrift stores. Uh, Chanel is probably going to be something that you're going to find at estate sales, but I mean, that stuff's out there. I'm not going to say, of course, uh, cashmere. And uh, like I said, we took a best offer for 300 and something. And uh, this is a beautiful sweater, so keep an eye out for Chanel stuff for sure. Uh, next up, we have this Navajo sterling silver leather concho belt. And this is actually a beautiful piece. I'm not sure if I can actually zoom into here. Uh, this thing was super heavy and uh, had authentic turquoise. And there, there's a whole thing about turquoise. If you guys haven't actually studied, if you're into reselling, this is something that you do full time. Definitely take some time out of your research uh, time and research turquoise. Um, turquoise is actually a very, very interesting stone or mineral or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you can tell sometimes where the turquoise comes from the mine, you know, like there's Kingman, there's Cinderella, um, there's, a, there's dozens of other ones that are actually closed down, but you can almost tell, uh, what, uh, mine the turquoise came in from just by looking at the kind of, uh, the look, uh, Bibs, I think it's Bisbee, Bisbee, I think it's called, is like one of the most popular uh, type of turquoise. But anyways, this actually sold, uh, I want to say we took a best offer for 300 and something on this one also. And uh, there's a whole thing with Navajo and American Indian listings. Uh, that's a whole thing I don't want to get into. As a matter of fact, we had a, we had a listing that was taken down uh, a couple days ago uh, for selling something like that. And so uh, just be careful. You have to have all the documentation if you're going to be selling, um, you know, American Indian and Navajo art. And it's like, it's like one of those things where um, eBay is very funny because they, they actually, you know, I think we're actually were singled out uh, because I posted, posted it on Instagram and uh, you know, there's a, uh, you know, the eBay police that are on Instagram. And so um, 
it was taken down. But but anyways, it's just one of those things where I, when I went to go research the thing that was taken down, there's literally dozens of them on eBay. So, you know, I guess I could have been a jerk and just went and reported all those auctions, but whatever. Just be careful when you're listing Native American stuff that you uh, abide by the eBay rules. Uh, we got Gina Joseph, Landshark Picker in the house. What is up, guys? Hope you're having an amazing uh, evening. So we're going over the, some of the stuff that sold uh, on eBay in the last week. And so, uh, yeah, so we took a best offer for three something on this one, and it sold really quick. Uh, next up, we have this um, real photo postcards. We've talked about postcards in the past. I know the prof the auction professor specializes in uh, postcards, and he has a really he has a really good uh, he has really good videos on these. Um, for for those that don't know, real um, they're called RPPCs. That's the that's the code you use. Uh, the real photo postcards. If you take a jeweler's loop to these, they don't have the dot matrix like if it was printed like a newspaper is. Uh, you'll see the little dots. That's when you usually know that it's a real uh, photo postcard. And uh, another thing too is basically what happened is uh, a long time ago, uh, photographers would have basically a photo paper that would have the postcard stuff uh, actually printed on the thing and then they would take the photos and de develop it on that paper. Or after the fact, they would stamp it with the postcard stuff. As you can see here in the back, it's very light. So this is uh, most likely one that was uh, kind of posted on there uh, at the end. But real um, photo postcards actually go for a lot of money. It's one of those things that um, I didn't actually realize this to a couple years ago, how expensive some of these are. And so definitely look out for real uh, photo postcards. A lot of the newer postcards, even stuff from the 40s and 50s, doesn't really go for that much money. But the the old black and white ones, the real photo ones, actually pretty go, go for a pretty good amount of money. And some of them uh, are even close to you know the $1,000 range and above. Uh, there's few of those out there and uh, i find that the ones that actually go for a lot of money they're just very weird they're usually city kind of ones and different like things like that so definitely look out for uh, postcards if you're out there in garage sales and thrift stores and everyone's talking about <laughs> everyone's talking about uh dinner in the chat room is too funny so uh here's another one for the example this is actually a really cool one so this is an, another one that was a real photo postcard of a bakery now i did some research on this i was trying to find out like maybe if this was a you know you never know like noah's bagels you know the very first noah's bagels or or something of that particular thing because that's what really gives value to uh the real photo postcards is historical value and uh, this one happened to be very unique it was a posted one as we can see here and I forget what year this was. You can actually read the years uh, sometimes on uh, the backs of the of the post dates here. Uh, I think this one was 1909. I could be wrong. As it, it was being sent to Chicago, this one was sent from Knoxville, Iowa. So uh, for those that don't know, if you look over here to the very top with this circle thing, you can see where the city and um, the state where it was postmarked. There's usually there's usually a date on those. And so that can usually determine what year a postcard was actually created. You can kind of generalize, uh, you know, the different years that were sent for this. But anyways, this one actually sold for $74.99. And uh, this was one of the first ones we sold. We got in a batch of the, we got in a batch of these and I was able to go through them and pull out all the real photo postcards and list those. And I have the other ones uh, that we're going to be listing at some point. Um, I think Don, the auction professor, was talking about this really cool epson scanner that you just feed the things into and so we're going to get one of those and so we're kind of hoarding all the rest of our linens uh, there's a lot of postcards that are from the 40s and the 50s that are printed on linen paper and so we're going to list all those those go for about you know five to seven to eight dollars a piece so uh, we're going to wait to do that but definitely look out for real photo postcards uh, next up we have these cutler and gross sunglasses uh, now this was a Paula listing, so huge shout out to Paula. We took a best offer for 80 on these. Now I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I never heard of this kind of a brand of sunglasses. So Cutler and Gross, if you do see those out and about, definitely uh, you know take a second look at that stuff. You know I find sunglasses all the time at thrift stores and garage sales, and you know for the most part, uh, sunglasses are going to be 
those super cheap ones that you can find at the 99 cent store and things. But every once in a while, um, you'll find a pair that I've, I find a pair that I've never heard of. I know 90 sunglasses are super in right now. Um, I could wish I remember some of the, the names on the top of my head. I know the skateboarder kind of, uh, BMX ones like, uh, Dragon and, uh, what are some other ones like Spies and, and things like that. Some of those in good condition still go for a good am amount of money. Um, but there's a lot of kind of like, um, I don't even know what to call them. They were kind of just odd, uh, you know, brands that go for a lot of money. I sold some earlier this year that I got at a thrift store for $2 and I sold those for $80. So, uh, sunglasses, you know, everyone needs those for the most part. Uh, they're always in demand. They're kind of like a consumable <laughs> in a way. So definitely look out for those. Uh, next up, we have this men's Adidas multicolored windbreaker jacket. We get in some funky clothes, uh, all the time. And usually this stuff gets put out in the store, uh, so if you're in the Burbank area, definitely come and stop by our store. Um, you never know what we're going to find. There's all kinds of great stuff out there all the time. But anyways, uh, when I saw this, I thought, oh, this would be, uh, actually, here's our store information. I thought it'd be a great uh, thing to put on eBay. We had to sit in there for about a month. And uh, let me see how much we took. Uh, I think we, I think actually I took a best offer for 40 something on this one. So uh, always look up odd jackets. You never know, you know, what jackets are going to go for a lot of money. Uh, we had like a, like a weaved one, uh, kind of like a New Mexico one that sold for about 300 and something earlier this year. So definitely look out for odd, uh, wind breaker jackets, not, I mean, just in jackets in general, uh, a lot of clothing for those that have been doing this for a long time. I'm not a fan of clothes and I just over the last year got into selling clothes. And I will tell you one thing that clothing is, uh, definitely a long tail item, so just be prepared that you're going to sit on something for a few months, if not a year, before it sells. And uh, you'll learn real quick if you haven't gotten to clothes. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not no professional clothes seller. But the year that I've been doing clothes, I will tell you, you will, you, <laughs> that stuff will start to just add up in your warehouse, in your house. Uh, so just be warned, you know, uh, clothing is definitely a long tail item for sure. And if you agree with that, definitely click the like button. <laughs> uh, next up, we have this World Industry Skateboards. We're in Southern California. We get in some skate stuff from time to time. Um, I am an ex-skateboarder from the 80s and the 90s. And uh, man, I can just, I can probably do another whole video on just skateboards themselves. And as a matter of fact, I thought I did a Know Your Stuff video on skateboards before. I know a lot about this subject because I was knee deep into skateboarding in the 80s and the 90s. And I kind of kick myself now uh, thinking about some of the stuff that's worth thousands of dollars now that I had my hands on, you know, when I was younger. And uh, a thing was, you know, a long time ago, these are kind of consumables also. They're skateboards. You ride them, you wear them out, they break. Uh, and that's what leads to the value in these things is no one really thought they were going to be worth anything. They got thrown away. Even used skateboards go for a lot of money from the 80s and stuff like that. So definitely look out for skateboards and another thing though is you're going to have to know the stuff like for me i was lucky enough to be a skateboarder for like 20 years so i know a lot about skateboards and uh so for me i know what's what so you're going to probably find a skateboard at a garage sale or a thrift store or wherever and get excited and it's probably going to just be junk so it's one of those things that you got to research and study because another thing too which is kind of cool and kind of not is they reissued a lot of the older boards uh, to newer ones and they pretty much look exactly like the old boards so uh, that's another thing you got to be worried about is is this a reissue is this an old one uh, usually you can tell an old one you know just by uh, you can everything ages even something that's brand new from 30 years ago is gonna kind of appear to have some age to it if it looks super clean like brand brand new there's probably going to be an issue but like I said, do your research on skateboards. As a matter of fact, I should probably do a skateboard video. Um, I think that's due. Uh, I think because I because I like I said, I've been in skateboarding forever, and uh, there's a lot of things that you guys should probably get to know about. Um, see, I'm in Southern California. This is definitely going to be uh, a location kind of thing. Not everyone's going to be uh, finding skateboards in plethora in like Maine or something like that, or Alaska, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm in Southern California and I don't find skateboards a lot. I mean, they do come up from time to time. Uh, but, uh, 
leave, leave, let me know in the comments if you're like in some crazy place in the United States and uh, they have skateboards. Let me know if you've seen them. Like I said, uh, I live in Southern California, which is pretty much the home of skateboarding. And even here, I don't really find this stuff uh, in, in, in plenty or if ever. But anyways, we found we, we got this in. Uh, I decided just to put it up for auction. It sold for $1,650. Uh, if this board was brand new, it probably would go for a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, but it wasn't, it was used. And so it's one of those things where we just put it up to see if it would sell and it did and we shipped it and yeah. Uh, next up we have this yellow rotary phone. Um, this is a Western electric bell system phone. You can find some of these phones every once in a while, you know, in garage sales and thrift stores and things like that. They're not, they're not huge money. There's some actually ones, uh, different colors. I think pink and turquoise actually go for a pretty good amount of money, uh, as we can see here. Now they're untested and things like that. I always mention that in, in the things. But actually, for the for the for how old this phone is, and I'm guessing this phone, if I was to look at this phone, I would say it's probably from the late '60s or sometime in the '70s, and it was actually in pretty good condition. Uh, so this sold for $39.99 plus $13.99 shipping. This fit like perfectly in a medium size uh, flat rate box. And I definitely highly suggest if anyone, you know, is utilizing the, the flat the flat rate boxes. They're amazing, especially if you get stuff that's like overweight, heavy. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole video. There's whole videos that could be made alone on just the shipping uh, part of this business. And uh, one of the things that newbies make a mistake on early on is not charging enough for shipping or knowing how to ship or, you know, knowing, you know, what is the cheapest way to ship. And uh, people lose money sometimes on that. So uh, be very aware. But anyways, this is a cool sale for uh, $39.99 plus $13.99 shipping. Uh, next up, we have this 1950s newspaper from August 30th. We had a bunch of newspapers come in. And uh, they were from all different types of uh, major events, U.S. history. Um, we had like D-Day, Pearl Harbor, and a lot of things like that. But I just want to show you guys uh, newspapers. So a lot of people sometimes pass these up. Uh, there's good money in some of the key dates. Now, that's a very important one I'm saying is key dates. Uh, there's a huge sub-collector community that are collecting newspapers that are into the comics that are in these newspapers. Um, a lot of that stuff was thrown out, so it's hard to find a newspaper that's complete you know, with the funnies, that's, that's what they're called. The comics are called the funnies and stuff like that. So, but anyways, I want to, I want to post this to show you guys that, uh, there is money in newspapers. Just e even go on eBay and look at newspapers and search by highest, uh, uh, auctions ended. And you can see definitely what I'm talking about. Uh, next up we have this Masonic Knights Templar Red Cross. This was kind of like a badge thing that was framed up in a frame. Uh, we get a lot of kind of odds and ends as far as this kind of stuff. I thought, you know, why don't I just put it up and see what happens? Uh, the main reason why I'm listing or showing this on the show today is to let you guys know that Masonic stuff uh, goes for a pretty good amount of money. Uh, go and search Masonic rings and search by highest bid or highest value. You'd be surprised at some of the, the money that some of those go for. Uh, that's probably going to be the most expensive things you're going to find in the Masonic kind of world is rings. Um, you know, it's not uncommon to come across ashtrays, uh, metal ones, uh, glass ones, and you can probably get 40 or $50 for a lot of those. So just be aware of different Masonic uh, items that you might come across. You might think, oh, what is this? This is stupid. But it's just one of those uh, genres that uh, are, are definitely... Um, one of those things to look out for. And Dilpreet Sai says, hello, tips on print-on-demand, please. <laughs> yes, tips. Yeah, this isn't a print-on-demand show. As a matter of fact, I should probably do some more of those videos. I know you guys, uh, a lot of subscribers are into print-on-demand. I've been doing, you know, merch by Amazon stuff. Uh, uh, not as much as I have before, but I still do it. And uh, just for you, buddy, I'll do a video in the next coming days for some print-on-demand stuff for sure. Uh, next up, we have these Sam, Sam Elliman Amber Black Leather Boots. Uh, these sold for $65. These things are actually pretty cra pretty crazy. Uh, really tall. I think uh, Paula, who had to ship this, actually had to go. And I think she actually had to buy a box for this thing. Uh, these things were super, <laughs> super tall. Uh, it almost looks like that, uh, that lamp from... Uh, 
a Christmas story. Just put a lamp post in there and just put a plug string a plug out of the back, the back of like drill a hole and and make a lamp out of this thing. Uh, anyway, still boots are selling very well. They sold for sixty five dollars with nineteen and ninety nine shipping. Uh, next up, we have this Bob Mackey uh, suede. It's kind of like a cowboy jacket. Uh, I got excited actually when I saw this because I thought this would actually go for a lot more money. We took a best offer for thirty-five dollars. Uh, Bob Mackey, for those that don't know, he's a designer. He's probably best known in the Barbie world for uh, designing. I forget what he did for Barbie. He did some designs for Barbie, and that's what he's most known for. So when you hear the word Bob Mackey, that's usually going to be associated with Barbie stuff. Um, but he did, he did a line of jackets. So when I saw this, I got excited because this thing was in mint condition. Uh, we had it on for a few months. We ended up taking a best offer for $35 plus $13.99 shipping on this one. Uh, next up, we have this Casey Blake bobblehead. Uh, we, this sold for $11.24 plus $9.99 shipping. Um, I, the main reason why I posted this is I've always been saying bobbleheads are definitely something, a bolo item. They're not always going to be uh, very pricey, but if you can get bobblehead, Here's my thing about bobbleheads. If you can buy any bobblehead at five dollars or less, you're gonna make money. Um, bobbleheads will sell all day long for ten dollars and above, especially if the boxes are in good condition. Just to be sure when you open these things and make sure that the uh, the parts aren't broken. A lot of uh, the newer ones are made out of like a resin plastic. Uh, a lot of the older ones are made out of plaster. They break very easily. Uh, but there's there's like a bunch of crazy promotional ones that go for over $100. So just do your research. Um, don't just buy bobbleheads blindly. Uh, that's what I said. If you can find them under $5, that's 95% of the time, that's going to be a good deal. And it's kind of funny because in the back of my head for all these genres, I have a price like, okay, if I can get these for $5 or less, I'll just buy them all and do a deal or something like that. Once you do this business long enough, you start to have these weird prices in your head about all different types of things. Bobbleheads, I would say, is the $5 and under one. If you can get bobbleheads for under uh, $5 or less, definitely pick them up. Just be careful. Uh, some of them aren't broken. And, oh, and another pro tip, too. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've bought bobbleheads, brought them home, and they were signed uh, by the actual uh baseball players or sports players or whatever. So definitely make sure that you, when you uh, take these home to just actually take a really good look at them. If you have time to try to uh, definitely look uh, while you're there, buying them wherever you're at, that they're not broken and stuff like that. If you're buying a whole collection, I mean, it's understandable that you can't uh, go uh, through uh, the whole thing for sure. Uh, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. I know it's been a while. I've been super busy. Uh, I want to make some more videos for you guys. I haven't forgot about you. I really appreciate it. We just got over 7,000 subscribers. Uh, if you're not subscribed, definitely go and click the subscribe button right down there. Click the bell for notifications. You'll get a notification, hopefully. I, YouTube's so weird when it comes to sharing my videos and stuff like that. So usually you almost got to catch these on the fly uh, to get them. But I really appreciate everyone's support. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And click the like button. And we'll see you next time. Take care.